Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter here with a quick Star Wars lore video. As you can probably tell by the short film I'm premiering on Friday, I love Mon Calamari Cruisers, and I found it really interesting how the new Star Wars canon has changed some of the background lore for Mon Calamari ship designs. To understand what I'm talking about, we first have to look at the expanded universe. The old EU paid a lot of lip service to the fact that, unlike the industrialized and standardized capital ships of the Imperial Starfleet, Mon Calamari vessels were individualized works of art, with no two the exact same. On a basic level, this meant that the many modules covering the cruisers could be swapped out to offer additional firepower of a specific type, shield generation, storage, or whatever else. But it was more than just that, and in fact, my previous assertion is basically lifted directly from Vector Prime, where, after seeing the Viscount, the ship is described in the following way. Like all Mon Calamari ships, this one was unique in artwork, sleek and flowing, and ultimately deadly. As another example of this principle, in a prior video, which I'll link above, I talked about how the MC-80B is described as coming in various designs and appearances, with the common-tailed version of the Mon Ramon not a defining feature for the class. Finally, the Essential Guide to Warfare says the same thing, basically that each elegant streamlined ship was a work of art. Yet, although this was background information, the lore itself seemed to fight against this notion. For the rebel fleet that fought at the Battle of Endor, for example, all the Mon Calamari cruisers which appeared on screen were designated either as the Home 1 type, the Liberty type, or the MC-80A, and the differences were based purely on aesthetics and some size. For example, the MC-80A is basically the Liberty, but without wings and a slightly different engine array, but it's counted as a completely different subtype. What's more, all of the individual MC-80As, or Liberties, or Home 1 types look the exact same. Now obviously this is just a reality of filmmaking and the limited models available, but given the lore says Mon Calamari cruisers are supposed to be somewhat unique, you would expect perhaps all the ships just to be generally the same class. But not only is that not the case in the movie, that's also how it works in the expanded universe. All Home 1 cruisers look like the Home 1 or the Independence, even if not one of those two ships. The Liberty type is common and looks like the Liberty all of the time. And although the EU was sometimes vague with its description for cruisers, there's no mention or proof of divergent or different designs. There are a few exceptions of this when we start to look at some of the less mainstream works, but generally my point is that Mon Calamari cruisers are put into pretty neat boxes. and we don't see the individuality that we would expect, we instead just see a bunch of a specific ship type. Canon, however, at least as of now, has taken a much more fluid approach to Mon Calamari warships. I want to focus on the MC-80 line, as we know less about the 85 and the 75 classes. First of all, the MC-80 ship line has essentially been distilled to two subclasses, the MC-80 Home 1 types and all other ships. Notably, it's no longer called the Home 1 class either, now it's the MC-80A, which personally I think makes more sense for a few reasons. I like that the Home 1 is just one ship within this class, and I like now that the old MC-80A and the Liberty are essentially permutations of the same ship just of course with different physical properties, at least for now. We've also seen much more variation in cruiser shape, although admittedly not always. On the lazy end, we have, for example, Star Wars Battlefront 2, where all of the Rebel Mon Calamari cruisers just look like the Liberty. However, the Star Wars comic line has been far more interesting. The Mutiny at Mon Cala and Hope Dies arc show us more cruisers with different or extra wings, strange body shapes, and basically lots of extra differences. The eventual rebel fleet produced is more uniform than the merchant fleet we see earlier, with most ships looking similar at least to the Liberty or Home 1 type from Legends, but still, even among those classes we see more variation, which I think is nice. It really, I think, actually abides by the lore that Mon Calamari starships are supposed to be different. Each one is a work of art. Each one is unique and deadly in its own way. In fact, I think it would be really cool if we get some sort of Empire at War remake or other Star Wars space battle game for each Mon Calamari cruiser to have an element of randomness, whether it's wing position, whether there's extra struts, the exact size of the vessel, etc. 
I suspect we'd see a degree of variation as well with the MC-85, although given that it was a purpose-built warship, perhaps it's more standardized, and the MC-75, although we haven't learned a whole lot about the class, also seems to have subtypes but the same general structure. However, some of that also comes from the Star Wars tabletop game, which may not fully represent canon. Anyway guys, that's all for today. Let me know, am I overstating the difference, or do you think canon has taken a different approach? to how Mon Calamari ships are handled. Personally, as I said, I like how it's been treated in canon, not only because of the more close adherence to the real background lore, but also because of the removal of the MC-80A as a separate class. The A in Legends just didn't really fit in, and was only mentioned in the EU, but never really described, at least coherently. Today's question of the day comes from a few of you, who have been asking recently about Star Wars reference books. So my number one most recommended reference book is easily the essential guide to warfare. I've honestly went through a few physical copies just because I wear out the spine from using it so much. However, I think the Essential Atlas is a great choice, as is the guide to vehicles and vessels. And you know what? Right now they're all fairly cheap, especially if you're looking for legend stuff. Other than that, the Star Wars Encyclopedia is incredibly comprehensive, and although it doesn't add that much new lore, it does an amazing job of collecting basically everything, no matter how obscure, from the Star Wars Legends EU. Anyways guys, that is all for now. Until next time, this has been Ackhart Slaughter. May the Force be with you.